Let me say a few comments here before we get going. And, and I, I think all of you have hopefully seen the emails going back and forth from Judy and Donna and even from Catherine lately. Uh, as you all know, we haven't, we haven't met since at least uh, February of last year and even before that. And I, I guess I've, right. I've tried to communicate with Catherine, our, our uh, chairperson, several times, either on a phone or with emails and no response, nothing. Fred, can I, can I just interrupt for one second? I'm sorry, to bring Richard up to speed on what I proposed before. And that is that this, this be considered a joint meeting of the trust and the housing committee. Sure. Since we've got the same members and in case there are things that need to be considered by both. That would as be long as the minutes, as long as the minutes reflect which body was doing what thing. Okay. okay. Sorry, so, Fred. Go ahead. So, who, is somebody taking minutes? Yeah, I was going to ask that. I, I mean, are we, I, are we I, recording this? Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll volunteer to to lead the, or moderate the meeting. I, I guess if nobody has any objection. Sure. Okay. Uh, so. Where's all this coming from is uh, CPC was, is, as you're aware, wanted to, was looking at using some of the housing money for rental assistance for properties in, in, in Waitley. Uh, it, it came up at CPC meeting and they wanted to, to meet with select board. Uh, unfortunately, the select board was not available for that meeting last week, and they didn't come to select board meeting either the following day. So we're just hearing stuff secondhand and seeing what's on the YouTube for the for the meetings. Uh, Catherine is is kind of on what did she say leave of, leave of absence from the committee, and she said that to the CPC chair, and he agreed that okay, we can do that and the CPC can, can work without her or without, I guess, a member from the housing committee. So that's what they've been doing. So the last meeting the CPC had, there was nobody from housing there. I had a conflict, so I couldn't be there. Well, I think Fred was aware of it. Yeah, um, I, had some, I had a medical issue last yeah. week. I couldn't, couldn't right. do so, it. So we couldn't be there, so we don't know exactly what was discussed other than, I guess, Jonathan filled us in at the select board meeting. Uh, but there's been a, a push in a, to use uh, housing money, Waitley housing money, e either from the CPC that's housing bucket or from the housing trust for rental assistance. And I, I guess I, I have some concern before we, we agree to do that, whether there's even a need to do that because some of the emails coming out uh, aren't really true. There, there is a website, uh, our website, Whaley.org has a link to a rental assistance program, Franklin County Regional Housing Authority is administering. They're doing that. People told us on email that there's no such program. Well, there is. You look online and you'll see it. Maybe it doesn't pop up the first thing on your computer or your phone, but there is a program there to do that. So I called the people that are administering that program and said, is this program still active? Are you still doing it? Uh, and are you still helping people with, with rental assistance? And they said, yes, they are doing that. There's no problem with, with funding the program. They have money to do that. I asked, are you doing it with any people in Waitley, any properties? And they said, yes, there is one or two in Waitley that they're dealing with. They couldn't really tell me which ones uh, they're dealing with. And I asked, is it just limited to the two units we have at Smike's house? And they said, no, they're dealing with anybody in Waitley that needs rental assistance. They are offer that service. So that is available. It's on our website, the link to do that how to go about doing it for a landlord or a tenant is on our website. And, and I also 
Well, I asked him, well, how many, how many rental units are there in Whateley? And I think I shared with you the, the table that FERCOG yeah. sent us, rental units in Whateley. There's 109 units uh, through that. I, I guess it, it comes from census data through 2019. Uh, you know, that's, that's the only count they have of, of rental units. And what that includes is multifamily plus one property owner, property owner rentals. So you just can't look, can't say 109 or multiple family units. Uh, I don't know where Lynn or others are getting the, the 80 number. Uh, that seems, I, I don't know, high maybe for, uh, there isn't that many multiple units in town. So we can get that from the assessor's records. We code how many units, one, two, three, or four units on a property. And we can get that from assessor's records. Uh, my recollection of that, there is not 80 multiple units in, on, in Whateley. Okay. But anyway, if you look at the 80. Well, well, also Fred, Fred if I can for a second, is that rental units in multiple unit properties or it could be and you know could it just be someone who's renting their house out yes it could be both that's what FERCOG is saying it could be both but what we have in Cesar's records we can't do both and I don't think I don't know where Lynn is getting it because you can't use mailing addresses necessarily because half the town doesn't have a Whateley mailing address they're in the South Deerfield or Haydenville or Williamsburg so uh uh you know, so um, I, I don't know uh, Fred, can I interrupt? The, 80, the 80 units, but but any, anyway, uh, the, the question is coming uh, down. Fred, Fred, can I? Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I interrupt you for just a second? Sure. Uh, I, I'm in my barn and my, um, it's unstable. So I'm going to take myself off video. Okay. Um, nothing personal. <laughs> okay. But I think that if I know how to helps with my connectivity, if you will. Okay. Uh, ready. Okay. Uh, go ahead, please. Okay. okay that sounds so, better. So look at, looking at the, uh, read the Franklin County Housing Authority website, they say they give you a link to their program, a page that gives you an overview. And you also, from that page, you can, you, there's a link to uh, the application process and also to Sunderland's program. Sunderland has, a, has started a program through them using the housing authority with CPA funds. But if you look at the number of rental units for Sunderland, you know, a thousand rental units compared to our 109, well, I guess you could understand why they want somebody else to administer the program for them. And the Housing Authority is doing that. Uh, and looking at the Housing Authority report for last year, one, there's one come out, I think it's into October or November. They had 240 properties that were asking for either rental assistance or mortgage assistance. So there is a lot of people doing that. Uh, trying to find out what Sunderland is doing. I didn't see anything on their website. I don't know if they even have a housing committee. I didn't see anything on their website telling people this program is available. I didn't go on the CPC side or to see what, what they had, but I, I guess I don't see a big outreach from Sunderland, for Sunderland people that is readily and easily available for any resident in Sunderland to, to get assistance. And with, with the thousand units they have, you know, that, that's, that is quite a few. And I, I guess I see people in Waitley looking for us to reach out to the 109 units. And I, I guess reach out and, and, and make money available to them if there's a need for that. And 
CPC, well, as you can see, members of CPC are looking at all this at different ways, coming up with different information. And the select board has kind of said that they like to see a recommendation from the housing committee, or at least weigh in and make a recommendation if we can do that uh, to the select board as to what we feel should be, should be done with this program. Uh, and, and that's why I, I guess I scheduled the meeting before our next select board meeting is this Wednesday. So hopefully whatever we decide, talk about today, Brian can relay to them. Of course, I'll be there too related to the board and, and I guess it's up to the board to make a decision on what we wanna do with this program. Uh, uh, the question I have is, is the money, is the, program that FERCOG is administering, would that be the same money as we would be trying to administer? Would our CPC money be in additional instead of what, what is the nature of the various programs? Well, the way I understand it, I, the way I understand it, our money would be additional to them. And they didn't indicate there was a shortage of funds. Now, some people are saying that the, the government, either state or federal, is making money available for housing assistance. I, I, I don't know. I don't see the details of that because I haven't spent time looking at for it. But that's probably going to go to these regional housing authorities or the communities that have a lot of housing units. We're, we're small potatoes compared to a lot many other people. Uh, Let me ask a question, if I may. Am I correct that the CPC is talking about using the money that it has rather than the money in the housing trust? Is that correct? They're looking at either one. Okay. So we have two decisions to make, it seems to me. One is, do we want to use housing trust money for this? Right. And if we do, then we can. If we don't, then the second question is, do we want to recommend in favor of or against having the CPC using housing money for this? But that's money in the CPC bucket. Is that a correct way of structuring the decision? Yes. Okay. And, and to use, I guess, either money, and if it's over, and Brian, correct me, if it's over $5,000, it would have to go to town meeting approval. The housing trust would. No, no, that is a big thing of the trust. The trust, if it's over five grand, it has to go to the um, select board, but not the town meeting. Okay. That was why we did the trust because we didn't want to make a deal and then twiddle our thumbs for three or four months waiting for, for town meeting. Okay. No, so anything over five grand just goes to the select board. Okay. And I see that, that Brian is nodding his head. Yep. So, cool. It's, but if they want to use regular CPC funds, what is that? Ah, I don't know. Oh, the town meeting? Yep. Okay. Regardless of the uh, Brian, when, the, when is the next town meeting? <laughs> we don't have one scheduled yet. June. Okay. June. Okay. Well, then... I think the decision then, almost by definition, is housing trust money. I mean, I mean, to say, go ahead and use all the money you want, CPC, means that everybody sits around until June, I take it. And by then, COVID is going to, presumably, COVID is going to be much less horrible than it is today, and maybe these issues will go away. Okay. Okay, but the other thing that's coming up is, is who's gonna administer it? our funds. I mean, are we giving them to the Franklin County Housing Authority, which they say they don't need money, but we're going to give them money anyway, and they're going to well, administer it for us? Or do we ask Brian and Amy to do that for us in our own town? Yeah, Brian's, Brian's not doing much. He can do it. No problem. Well, <laughs> you see it. <laughs> it looks like Brian's just sitting at home, so. Nothing. No chaos going on. <laughs> but, right, right. right. But you, you, you look at some of the requirements for the either the landlord and the, and the tenant, and, and there's 
stuff in there that you gotta you gotta verify their residence, verify their income, look at look at their assets, uh, get some positive uh, identification from them, and, and you gotta verify all this information for the tenant for the landlord first, and then a tenant that applies, you gotta go through all that again to do that information, uh, and, and that's. I guess, do we want to do that if anybody applies? Do we have resources to do that? I would think we don't. I would think this would be a simple matter of writing a check to whoever we're supposed to write the check to if we want to do it. Uh, but yes, but the problem is, who are we supposed to write the check to? Right. Well, frankly, it's the verification of eligibility to write that check. Well, I think we would simply say this check would go to the Franklin County for their program number ABCX or whatever the hell it is, uh, all in conformance with state and federal regulations. Lovely, okay. wouldn't we? Okay, but like I'm saying, if they're saying they don't need the money. Well, right. What, what are we just throwing money away? Giving them money would. Let me, if I can, if I can make my two cents worth. Um, I agree with much of what Fred says. Uh, I joined the committee with the intention of providing sh structure, shelter, adding to the amount of housing available. Um, I think the other two members of the committee are aware that I've kind of always been lukewarm toward programs that do this or do that, where at the end of the day, you've spent money, but you don't have anything constructed. You don't have anything that you say, this is a Smites house and it'll last for years and years and years. Uh, on the other hand, I certainly don't want to appear to be a curmudgeon and say, well, let them eat cake. Um, the second issue is we don't have a lot of money and, and, and everyone on the committee knows you know, we've been talking about, we'd love to do this and we'd love to do that. And what will our 100,000 buy? And the answer is very little. So if we start losing whatever we have, that puts us in a bit of a bind. Uh, and thirdly, I think, and I, I'm, just, I'm just echoing what Fred said, there's no analysis that shows that people need this money. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I don't wanna, you know, I, it's important that this committee doesn't appear to be, you know, just saying, well, do it our way or the highway. We want to build buildings. And if, and so far we haven't built a thing. We've been around for what, five years or something like that. Right. Um, so to a certain extent, shame on us, the money is available and people always want to get access to available money. We should have been able to provide something which we haven't. Okay. So I'm, tending to agree with Fred, unless there's some, uh, what's the word, social consciousness thing. But Fred, you, you're saying that the money isn't even spent that they have available? Right. So yes. why are we doing this? Because some people think it would help Waitley residents that are supposedly right. struggling with rent payments and mortgage payments, which we but don't know. We, we don't know until, and, and that's the other part, how do we find that out? And they're saying, well, let's do a, a mailing or a survey or, or calling. Well, Lynn had a robocall that kind of mentioned that at the end of a robocall, but. Well, if we can identify the hundred and some odd rental units, <laughs> uh, would Anybody want to pony up a couple hundred bucks and come up with the letter and send it to the director? Brian, don't we, we have like a couple hundred dollar budget on the housing committee anyway? Yeah, 200, I think. Yeah, I think it's 200 that we never spend. Right. I think so. <laughs> and unfortunately, it goes away every fiscal year. Yeah, well, right. I mean, but I, I think if, we, if we're talking about doing a mailing to 109 units. Yeah. It's What's just that? a question of coming up with, with the content for the letter that we could actually spend some of that two hundred dollars. Good idea, yeah. and we could just say, "Hey, look at you know if you're if you're hurting, please go to F uh, F Rock or whatever it's called. Uh, talk to Susie Jones or whomever, and they may be able to help you. And if their money runs out, then 
maybe it would be appropriate for us to discuss this issue. Well, see, let me just say, I'm not sure we know the address of the 109 units. Oh, right. Okay. It, it come from census data and, and that's really drilling down to find the address. And I don't know if that's available or even public information to know that. Oh. So we'd be kind of guessing. And as the assessor, and using well, whatever. Let, let's, we can mm -hmm. see if Lynn is able to tell us, has any ability to tell us. Okay. And see, the other thing, Richard. Brian, uh, Brian do, you, I, do you know of any? I, Richard, I hear what you're saying that we haven't. Brian, do you uh, know of any way we can find him? Okay. Richard, we haven't done much in the last five years. Yeah. And our, our, our money is is accumulating. I think there's over a, was 110, 115 in the trust, and yeah. there's another 40 or 50 thousand that hasn't in the CPC bucket that hasn't been transferred over. Right. And see, at our last select board meeting, they had no idea what the housing what the housing committee was doing. So I kind of tried to fill them in on things we're working on, uh, things we're looking at, and even the. Uh, the assistance we're getting from FERCOC to do the survey, uh, do a survey, a housing needs assessment, I guess it's called, and to decide whether we want to do a bailout survey or whatever. They weren't even aware that that was going on. So we are dealing with, we're trying to figure out what the housing needs of the town are. And because we, they haven't, we haven't made it to the public, they're assuming nothing's been going on. Well, I tried to communicate some of this to to Catherine, and uh, because one one of the the projects that has some potential maybe is on LaSalle on LaSalle Drive, LaSalle what extension LaSalle Drive there. Uh, there is a potential to use our money to do something there, yeah. and. I made so I made kind of informal discussions with some of the property owners, and they're willing they're willing to talk to us oh. about doing something on LaSalle Drive. Now I didn't get into money issues or 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 uh, what exactly would be there uh, and, and how whether they would contribute funds or or be part of a of a say committee to to work on something. I didn't get into that detail. Just to, just to find out if there was interest. If they said, no, don't bother. We, we, we don't want anything there. Well, well, then I would let it go. But that's not true. I didn't see that. And, and, I, and I still think there's there's a potential to do something there. It's it's too early to tell anybody to make it public information. I mentioned it to Brian some, but to say that that we're looking at that until, and I was hoping Catherine would, would do something. She's our, I don't call it, our resident expert on housing to help us figure out how to pursue that idea and how to get involved and what schedule, what are we, what are we looking at in, in can our, and do we have enough money to do something there? That's what I was kind of hoping for her to help, but you know, she's not available for it right now, so. Richard, if I remember a couple well, of years ago, you tried contacting the owners there and they, either never got back to you or didn't express particular enthusiasm. Is that right? No. Um, well, that's half right. Um, I spoke with the owner and the house, first of all, let me confirm, Fred, when you say LaSalle Drive, do you mean that broken down house that we all are talking about? Is that LaSalle Drive? Yes, that okay. house and, and beyond to the end of the road there. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, that person, inherited the house from his parents. He's just using it for storage, if you believe that. Um, he had to talk with his sister and I, I got no real support from the housing committee. So I kind of dropped it. He, he dropped it, he didn't pursue it. But we know exactly what to do, Fred. The next thing to do is to spend some money and get a phase one um, environmental review it should cost Listen, there, there there are two houses on the set there are two properties yeah. on the cell drive there's a bunch there's of the one at the end the very end yes the one i thought we were talking about was the really broken down one with the vines yes. growing over the car in front yes yes yeah 
the, the, uh, the car, by the way, is now historic preservation. And so we cannot move the car. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, no, this is this is relatively straightforward, Fred. I didn't know that you had had this had the owners ha had some interest at all uh, in selling it. Again, please clarify. Of which of these two properties are we talking about? Well, I think we should talk about both. Well, the, the the property owner I'm I'm mentioning is not the one that's got that house with the car falling down. It's okay. the next property. It's got a still got a house there that's. No windows, no siding, nothing. A house and and a storage or garage building, plus another ten acres beyond that. Right. That's the property owner that I've been talking to. That that owner, that owner does not live in Waitley. Does not live actually there because there's nothing there to live in. To live in. The the other first one, I, I don't know. I, I I guess whether we include that in our discussion. For that or not? Maybe yeah, because I thought that that the the one with the car was the one we had been talking about, not the other one. No, I have I've it never is, talked but, to that person. But the okay. good news is, between Fred and me, we've actually covered the world. Between Fred, his conversations and my conversations, yeah, we have enough land to do something with, more than enough. So now the issue is, and I'm wondering, and I almost have to talk, uh, ask Brian what you think. Is there a way to get a meeting with those individuals that is not a public meeting? In other words, how many people from the committee can be at that meeting? Two, los dos. So if we had two members of the committee ask, I could ask my guy, Fred could ask his guy, we could meet at, I don't know, well, I guess we'd meet over Zoom and just chit chat with them and see what their interest was. That would be wonderful. Okay. That would be, that, that would be, that's what I joined the committee for God knows many years ago. Okay. Uh, the, the property owner I've been dealing with does not have a computer at all, so. Well, all right. I don't know phone, what, what kind of phone service limited probably, but. Phone is never good because you don't see, you can't read expressions, you can't get a, any kind of rapport. Well, anyway, so, perhaps we should uh, put this issue to bed first, and then well, okay. Maybe... So, so Fred uh, Baron, what's your thinking on this um, request for money? Uh, it's. I'd certainly like to encourage in any way we can people or to make aware people make people aware of the money that FERCOG has. Right. Which is, I assume, either state or federal money being run through them. Uh, the other problem with setting up our own program is determining, you know, that the people ha are participating in the FERCOG program. What is the level of subsidy they're providing? What <laughs> level of subsidy would we want to provide on top of that? Right. And then doing the whole verification authentication process, which I don't know that we have, you know, that Brian and uh, the town office's staff have the bandwidth to deal with. The only thing, if we ask, if we do a survey to these people and ask, we're kind of committed to do something with that. And do we, do we want to go down that road? Because they're going to say, well, you asked us and there's, you know, 18 people that say, yeah, we want some free money. What's going to be our next step? Do we? Is, well, depend. We can simply refer them to FERCOG and say, if you're not aware of this program, it's there. Right. Uh, well, the first question is, can we find them? And I, I don't know that we answered that question. Can either Lynn or uh, apparently the assessor can't find these folks. They're, they don't show up as the renters. Is that correct, Fred? Right. OK. So now the question is, can either Lynn or Brian help us with this? I, Brian, do you keep any records of ownership or rental or anything like that? 
Um, I'd have to talk to Lynn. If she came up with a number of, of 80 units, uh, I mean, she must have the addresses. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to reach landlords. If, obviously, if we have a tenant address. Um, uh, I mean, maybe. Okay. Well, make can make best efforts. I mean, maybe what we can do is, is suggest that we want to just send a letter and not so much. And I think Fred's concern is correct. You know, you can't just say, well, just kidding. Uh, but we send a letter saying, we just want you to be aware that FERCOG has this money available and we'll give you the contact information. If you have trouble getting in touch with them, please call one of our staff, our, our committee members and we'll try to expedite on something like that. Yeah, I also wonder if we could do it like at a postcard rate. Sure. And then just just send it to everybody. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. If we yeah. if we can't identify rental units, can we send how, how many distinct postal addresses are there in the town? <sighs> Probably eight hundred or so. I don't even know. I was going to guess closer between six hundred, closer to six hundred. And how much is a postcard to to buy and well, mail? There's, yeah, there's six hundred. Yeah. Your housing units uh, was it like thirty cents. I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah. So that's one hundred and eighty dollars, and we have two hundred. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> yes, but uh, usually we spend none of it. So right, <laughs> you better spend it. That we we can do that just on our own. We don't have to go to the select board or anybody yet, do we? Right. No, we can do that on our own initiative. But maybe if we want to do that, we could ask Fred on Wednesday to tell the select board this is what we're doing and get feedback from them to make sure we get buy-in. Yes, I could do that. That sounds like a good idea. Can I can I just add something that that sure. what I've heard from from the folks who are pushing this? And that is there's existing programs um, and there are, I believe there's certain income limits and in terms of eligibility, in terms of total overall amount that people can get from the, the, the raft. Well, I think it's called the raft rental. I don't know what it stands for, but I think it's called raft. And right. the other one is I think Irma uh, oh, in terms right. of mortgage assistance. Um, so, so there's, so there's income, um, there's income eligibility limits and then there's a, a limit on the total amount. So I'm not sure if they see this as, as something that's duplicative of that or something that would be an additional safety net, so to speak, for people who have already maxed out the limits of those programs. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not expressing a preference either way. I'm just saying, I think that's what they were looking at as a possibility. Um, I'm a big fan of spending other people's money first, so <laughs> I don't know that we need to duplicate programs and, and spend town funds because we all know we can find other uses for those. Um, so it's just something to think about. Let me ask you a question. I don't know if you know the answer, but when you said max out, let's say, I don't know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith have maxed out their authorization and even though there's money left they can't get access to it is that what these folks were talking about then to try to help mr and mrs smith yeah i think it's a limit of 10 10, 000. 10 000, yeah. okay so if you spend over 10 grand even if there's money left in the program you cannot apply for it is that your understanding if you've received ten thousand dollars in assistance if you receive it, I see. yep and were they were they down to that level of detail that they felt that we should augment over and above whatever the other folks were giving, even though there's money. You see my question. If there's yeah. money in the pot, it may not help Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Is that, was that their impulse, do you think? It, CPC? I, I think the, the need and understanding has evolved. Um, I think the original, the original thought was that and I could be wrong. The original thought was 
well, we don't know many programs out there because we haven't heard of them and people are hurting, so let's help them. And I think as more research was done, we find out that there are these programs that do exist and these are the parameters of their of that program. So that's meeting a, a certain need. Um, well, at least a need statewide, presumably, um, and in town. But it, it sounds like from Fred's conversations, it, <coughs> it might have helped several people. And then it was sort of like, okay, well, there seems to be a program. Can we develop a program that that complements what already exists? Gentlemen, which my my, my feeling is that the three of us who are on the housing committee either don't have the time, inclination, or whatever to put together a housing committee project. Oh, absolutely. And I would be perfectly happy to kick it back to uh, CPC, and if they want to do something with housing money out of their bucket and devise a program, they're welcome to do it. We're certainly not going to, wouldn't object, but I just don't think we have the manpower on this committee at this time to put something of that sort together. Well, let me just ask a question. Um, we wouldn't object. Obviously, again, I, I don't think we should appear to be curmudgeons here, but just me, I would, I'm not sure I'd object, but I would see that money going away for something that is taking it away from our ability at some point to be able to build housing. Now, if it's de minimis, if it's you know five grand or six grand, I guess that's okay. But does the CPC have, uh, Fred, do you notice it have like 60 grand worth of money in its coffers for housing? I'm is that what we're talking about? I'm not sure. I, I thought at last uh, annual meeting, they gave a table of what the money they had and what we put in each bucket or, or what yeah. was taken out of each bucket. And I thought I saw, I don't know, 50,000 or something. Right. Unless Brian, you could remember anything different on that. I don't know. No, I, I think it's I think it's around there. I think it's around 50,000. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have about 110 and they have about 50. So between the two of us, if we wanted to do any kind of a project, we would have access to 160,000, which is, you know, something worth spending. Right. It, it would go a fairly long way on LaSalle Drive. Yes, yes. and, it, yes, and yes. It, would it would leverage a project with us showing town town funds. And I, I think the property owner would, would kind of agree to help as well. Yes. Uh, you know, if we spend money, I don't know, frivolously or, or here and there, yeah, we're not going to have much ever to do anything. Let me, let me make a suggestion to see if we like this. What Could we have kind of a motion or something to just indicate that we would, we would be interested in sending out postcards to advertise the FERCOG, uh, availab the availability of FERCOG money. Richard, excuse me, uh, say, we, 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 ex Richard, just one sec. We, the housing committee. Sure. As opposed to the trust. Yeah. yeah. To clarify. Well, both, I guess. Is there is there a reason for a distinction? Because I, I think that a project, first of all, if we're sending out postcards, that would be with housing committee money. Yeah, you're probably right. Not housing trust, not the housing trust right. money. Yeah, okay. So let's just leave the housing trust out of it because I don't want to bring things up. And, and that's also why, Fred, I, I'm, I'm hoping not to bring up the fact that, you know, to say to the CPC, if you want to spend housing money, go, go to it. Um, I don't want to have to say that. If they do want to spend it, then I presume they would want to come back to us for a recommendation. But that's a bridge we can cross when we get to it. So basically, we just say we, you know, we understand people are hurting. We understand there's a way to help them de-hurtify. 
we understand there may be a communication issue, comma, therefore, semicolon, we would recommend in favor of, uh, we are prepared to send that to pay for postcards. We, the housing committee, are prepared to pay for postcards to go out to tell folks, you know, who to contact and that if they have difficulty, they should call one or all of us. And I'd be more than happy to put my personal number down there. And we'll try to help them get through the bureaucratic maze. Well, we for, have no more clout. As far them. as directing people, we, Brian, I assume we can direct them to, to Amy or Lynn. Well, some. I'd rather keep, I mean, Brian, aren't you like up to your tutu and work? I mean, do you, do you need any more work? I, I, I think I <laughs> Rick, did not need any more work. No, no, it's, it's not Richard. It, this would just be a question of redirecting the call of giving the people the right number, the right number in Greenfield to call. Oh, no, I would. I mean, I've, I've dealt with a lot of people who are actually my age and older who get befuddled. I get befuddled easily. And if I'm trying to talk to some bureaucrat and it's not working, I'd love to be able to call somebody like Fred or Richard and say, hey, this is what I've done. Can you intercede? And Fred and Richard calls the bureaucrat and says, hey, pal, you know, get on the stick. Don't screw around with this guy. I'm from the housing committee, <laughs> whatever that means. OK. Right. That's, uh, yeah, just whatever it means to be from the housing committee might strike fear and terror in someone's heart. I don't think so, but it might. That's well, all. If you want to volunteer to be that contact, that's fine. Sure. That's fine with me. And I, I, I don't think uh, Catherine is going to object either. So I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, as far as the Richard, as far as the communication goes, I would say we will send. We'd like to set to keep it targeted to the rental units if we can identify them. If not, we'll have to oh, yeah. send something to every unit in town, every yeah. residence in town. Yeah. No, I, I mean I, I think, think if we can, I, go ahead. I can follow up with uh, the housing authority to ask them if they. If they can tell us where the 109 are, just to see what they they say. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and, I, I'd rather do something to a smaller group, but if we have to do it to a larger group, we we have to. Right, and and the other the other thing I I guess I could ask them is is anybody that has applied for their assistance maxed out in any of these programs, the two programs, are they maxed out or looking? for additional money. Uh, my, my guess is they won't be allowed to tell you who has applied. No, but if anybody, they could say, well, yeah, two people maxed out or nobody maxed out yet or what? Maybe they can yeah. tell me that. Well, that won't tell us where, I guess, but. but yeah, that, actually, if, if we don't know who, that information doesn't really help us. Well, yeah, okay. Well, well, and, wait and I would guess for privacy reasons, they couldn't say who it was. Hang right. on, I think it does help us because if, nobody is maxed out, then we get to say to the CPC and we don't sound like jerks, come on guys, this is premature. Just do the letter and there's lots of money available. If some number have maxed out, whom we don't know, but at least we know they've maxed out, then maybe we might want to reconsider this decision. Maybe, I'm, I'm not saying we would, but I think that would be very useful information. Because if no one's maxed out, then this is an exercise in futility. I mean, yeah, right. Okay, they, that, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and and, and I guess that this whole thing puzzles me because I don't know why CPC got involved in this. Where did this start from? I mean, well, they're I'm looking sure. for ways to spend housing money, and, and well, and they why, they, why they, they have housing is one of their areas of interest, right. and someone. Took it to a meeting there. I don't know. I and, I don't know how it started, but some but someone probably Brian, just said, "Hey, we're supposed to do something with housing. Why aren't we? Uh, or can we?" Right. And as Brian said, everyone loves to spend somebody else's money, yeah. and we're a fat target there because we ain't doing not much with it. So, yeah, uh, I, I can understand that. Okay. I mean, they can't spend it on anything else except housing. So uh, I understand. But, okay, does that make sense to everybody? That we'll simply, uh, I, I guess we'll tell Fred, Fred Selectman, <laughs> Fred Orlowski, that 
we're prepared to spend some of our own the housing committee money to send notifications to either everybody or to select people if we can find them offering to help them communicate with the FERCOG if they need to, something like that. Is that what we well, wanted? It's, it's the housing authority, not FERCOG. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the housing authority. Okay. And okay, I think, what do we give? About two weeks to try to get, to figure out if we can get, you know, what list we can get? Yeah. We if, to figure some time at which point we have to go. We at which point we have to do something. Well, I, I could find out in a few days what's available, I, I would guess. So now, if we want I still another... think get, get, given Franklin County's responsiveness in general, I would say two weeks might be a better <laughs> time frame. Yeah. Brian's nodding his head. So do we want to meet again to discuss this or, or if we get enough information, just go ahead with the postcard? So yeah, I think we should just, I don't think we need to meet again. Okay. I, mean, I don't yeah. think we need another meeting. Uh, Richard, how about if you and I, if we get the information, you and I, we can get together and mock something up. Sure, sure. And, and I think what, the information or the direction to whoever we're giving it, whether it's us or Brian or somebody is, if you can, if we can get specific addresses, we'll spend the money on a real letter and give a little bit more pizzazz. If we have to mass mail, we'll just do a postcard. Yeah. Right, that exactly. That's why I'm giving the two weeks to know what, right. what it is we need to produce. Yeah, yeah, and, and Fred, we can get together and and once we know whether it's a letter or a postcard, then right. I think that'll tell us. Yeah, we can't do anything until we know what we have to produce. Exactly. Okay. Could, could I suggest that maybe you try to contact somebody in Sunderland to see how they're advertising their program, if they have, if they've done anything other than let the housing authority do it? I don't know who you're calling Sunderland. I, I don't see on their website, I looked, they don't even have a housing committee and, and there's no announcement of this program available to them even on their website, so. Yeah, I think that's the answer. The answer is that they're just letting the authority, the housing authority do it. Yeah, housing authority, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, now, um, Fred Orlowski, I, yeah. I would love to work with you and try to get these two owners together. I forget who the guy was I spoke to. It was a year and a half to two years ago. But uh, did you, do you feel comfortable having that kind of a conversation? Well, yes, but I, I guess I, I think we need to involve our chair in this. And if she doesn't seem to, want to do anything now, not even Zoom meetings. I mean. I, at this point, I, I think know. we have to consider her out of the picture and yeah, do whatever I, we're going to without her. Okay. You know. I mean, she, she still gets all of the communications that we all get. She gets invited to the meetings. Right. Right. And if she, yeah. if she wants to give us input, she can, but I, I wouldn't count on tremendous involvement from Catherine in the near future. Right. Okay. And in this meeting with Fred Orlowski and myself and whomever, there would be absolutely no promises given of anything. There would be, we would not have any mandate to do anything other than to say, hey, what do you all think about doing It's an explore, they'd be exploratory meetings. It's exploratory only. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to do that. Uh, cool. But, and, and Richard, do you, do you have any kind of, I don't know, guide or anything to guide a discussion with the property owners? What would you go yeah, about? This, yeah, this is what I did for a living. I was, I was, I was in charge, I, I worked for a, a consultancy and I was in charge of the affordable housing division. So, oh yeah, this is like falling off a log. It okay. really, I mean, it's not like falling off a log, but yes, I mean, I can, I can certainly help steer the, uh, the, the conversation. So could you send me something I could use? Uh, sure, let me ask you a question. 
is it going to be used to introduce the idea of a meeting or are you going to use it to see what the meeting wants to end up being? The latter. Okay. Yeah, it'll be it'll be pretty sketchy. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I'll ship something out to you. Um, okay. Well, let's do this. Let's, okay, so the ball is in my court. I will ship something out to you. Once you have it and you feel comfortable with it, right. then we'll communicate to make sure that we have the right um, site plan or plat map. We'll work on a plat map of exactly who we think owns what so that we right. know kind of what we're talking about. Right. And then you'll call your dude, I'll call my guy and yeah. we'll see if we can set something up. Right. Cool. Okay, so let's get back to okay the meeting today. Okay, so the housing committee, we're, we're saying we're going to do a, we're going to investigate getting property owners that have rental units in, in town or in, in, okay, and do a mailing to a we're, we're committed to do we're committed to doing a mailing. We just don't know exactly who it is to yet. Right. Yes. Okay, that's for the committee. What are we doing for the housing trust? Are we taking any action? The housing trust is the meetings that you and Richard are having. Yeah. The preliminary meetings you're having with the homeowners. Okay, Let's not bring the housing trust up on this giving away money. Let's just the housing trust is, is not taking any action on the rental. It's taking no action as far as the rental assistance program no, at all. Not at all. Okay, so I want to make We don't even mention it. So when you talk to the select board on Wednesday, just talk about the housing committee. Well, they're going to ask about the trust because it's come up already in email. So well, I, I, and I, I think that on behalf of both, we can say that we feel it's it's an appropriate thing for the housing committee to do, but not the housing trust. I think that's wonderful. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Are we home free? I think we're done. Okay, anything um, else we need to talk about? No. Brian, anything else we need, we should cover? You're muted. I can't hear you, Brian. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, at some point we'll need to, we'll need to figure out if we need I think we're a member short. Two members short. Right, we're two yeah. members short. And then there's also, um, you know, I think there's also some 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 language in the housing trust bylaws that talk about how often you meet and reports and things like that. So at some point we're gonna have to get back into that. Although there's not really any penalty if we don't. Um, right, and, but, and for the purposes of, of the quarterly meetings, this counts as a quarter, one of the quarterly meetings. So yeah, we restart the clock from here. Right. right. So this was a housing trust meeting as well. Okay. Yes. And the housing trust took up the business on the floor of which there was none and adjourned. Yeah. No, the, the housing trust gave Fred and Richard instructions to That's try right. to contact yeah. those property owners. That's right. right. Okay, there you go. And took no action on the rental assistance and program. took and, and took no decide, action. and decided to take no action on rental assistance. Excellent, excellent. Okay, but getting back to the the requirement of quarterly meetings because it was a trust. Is there something in COVID guidelines that say that that doesn't apply anymore? Is it? Do you know, Brian? Is anything coming out of Boston <laughs> on that or no? Nope. No, there's nothing like that that's come out. Okay. No, but I, I would suspect that when we get sued for not meeting sufficiently, that courts might be a little bit lenient. Yeah. Okay. And they'll say, what's your damages? And then <laughs> right. whoever sues you will say nothing and they'll say, go home. We'll give them Richard's okay. phone number. Right. All oh, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's on a postcard. Okay. Yeah, okay. send a postcard. I, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. And I'll second that. Okay, I think we need roll call vote here on step by. Uh, Fred Barron, roll. Yeah. Adjourn. Richard? I think he did. Fred Orlowski, yes. yes. Okay.